uh, who is talking to us. I'm still waiting for hands, asking questions of clarification. So members have read the closing argument. They are ready to deliberate. And so there is no question that uh, we have to, members wish to ask uh, from the initiator. In that case, uh, let's thank the initiator for the closing argument that we presented on the 11th of December, which we have been distributed to the members. As the initiator indicated, if we do find the charged person not guilty, and therefore this is the end of the road. Uh, if the committee finds charged members guilty, the rule uh, enjoins us to then continue with the process and the next step will be to ask that they must make the presentation. Uh, just to emphasize the point that she made, is there, um, so honorable, uh, not honorable, so advocate Mayosi, thank you very much. You, you, may, you may remain on the platform because it's an open meeting, uh, but your participation comes to an end now, unless uh, if the committee decide otherwise. Um, okay, members, let's Thank continue. You, Thank you. Uh, any taker? Uh, you can switch on your, your video. All right, so members are not uh, willing to engage. Or oh, is it a question of seeing who's going to go first? <laughs> uh, honorable, um, <clears throat> honorable, uh, uh, let me take the hands uh, first. Okay. Uh, I see the hand of Honorable Suela. Honorable uh, Hussein, those are the only hands that I could see for now. Uh, can we uh, get Honorable Suela? Uh, thank you, Chairperson. I think I, I'm not asking any question, but I just want to, to deliberate on the closing argument by the initiator. Uh, that I'm supporting her recommendations, that those members, all those members are supposed to be uh, not charged. The closing argument says that uh, they are found guilty. So I am supporting that statement without saying any, many, many things, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Sorry, Chair. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, Chair. You want to deliberate? No, no, Chair, just uh, to, to direct the committee. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right, let's, let's receive your direction. Thank, thanks, Chair, um, and uh, good afternoon to all the honorable members. <clears throat> no, no, what you want to say is legal, Chair, is simply that uh, this is going to be quite a laborious process in the sense that uh, uh, the committee needs to consider each charge on each member, uh, and it also needs to consider each finding on each member. So it's not a question of saying we've read the report, um, uh, and after having read the report, we will agree with the recommendation that all the members are killed. So it's, it's quite going to be an involved process in the sense that we, we need to look on each charge uh, on each member, and of course, it's finding on each member. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Andile. Uh, 
You are now ahead of us. We are now getting deliberations. I will still put it to the committee. Uh, each member who has been charged and all the charges and members will then have to indicate that for now we are opening for deliberations. Honorable Hussein. Yeah, um, Chair, Chairperson, I, um, the previous speaker, I think now um, covers the point that I wanted to make. And I think perhaps maybe it would be better if I then just make uh, my input under each of the charges. Um, I wanted to make a suggestion on the recommendation, but uh, perhaps maybe I shouldn't do that at this point until we start going through the individual charges and then I can make my input on each of those. Uh, I think it will be premature to maybe just speak on the final recommendation before going through those charges. So I'll wait for that opportunity. Thanks, Jim. Okay. All right. It looks like uh, there, there is an appetite just to get straight into the into the the charges. Uh, maybe let's do that. Let's do that. I, I just wanted to open for deliberations by members to raise whatever issues, after which we are gonna go to each member. So you'll have to help me there, um, uh, Andile. Uh -huh. On the, on yeah. the, the first honorable Matthias. Can I just give you the information, Chair? Yes. Yes. Um, you, 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 you will see that uh, if, if, if you read the closing arguments, you will see that the first affected member is uh, Honorable Matthias. And of course, there are seven charges uh, uh, which have been put I mean, against his name. And, and of course, after him, it's Honorable Shonyana. Uh, and after Honorable Shonyana, it's Honorable Komane. Uh, and then the other 13 affected members. So that's the sequence that we're going to follow. Yes. And yeah, yeah. Now the first member is Honorable Matthias. Uh, is was faced with seven charges. Uh, I don't think that we have to go through each charge because we were part of the, the hearing uh, when all these charges were being read out when the evidence was being led. And so I think we must just talk to the recommendations on each charge. Uh, Honorable Hussein, maybe I must invite you at this point uh, to come in. We are on Honorable Matthias. Yeah, uh, Chairperson, may I just say that, uh, and it depends entirely on uh, uh, the procedure that you want to follow, but the, the comments that I make now um, are relevant to all of the charges uh, and all of the members who are facing the charges. I have read the recommendation. I have read the report. I'm satisfied with the contents of it in all respects in, um, against all of the charge members. I can find no reason anywhere in the document, in the charges, in the arguments, in the evidence before us to suggest otherwise. So in the case of um, Honorable Matiase and the rest of them, may I ask that you record um, my support for the recommendations in its entirety uh, against all of the members uh, for all of the charges that they, they, are, they are facing. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. But let me get your specific uh, recommendation on Honorable Matias on all the seven charges. I agree with the recommendation, Chairperson, that, uh, that the member is guilty. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I go back to Honorable Suela and then Honorable Ngozi? Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, although I jumped before the gun, but I think it was necessary to do so because we were not advice on how to proceed but uh, i appreciate the advice by the legal team let me concur with the latter speaker my colleague from the da that 
I support the recommendations by the initiator in all affected members. The first one being Honorable Matthias, that uh, the recommendations by the, the initiator uh, be accepted by this committee of finding her guilt with the rest of the other members. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Honorable Glossy. Uh, thanks, Chair. Well, the, the, what is called the uh, concluding argument that has been given to us um, or closing argument is a serious mockery of justice and actually best uh, uh, practices in law. Um, there is a, there are fundamental, and I think I don't have to repeat some of these points because the record will show that at each stage throughout the proceedings, uh, we raised these questions about the inconsistency of evidence and in some instances, the absolute absence of evidence of the contravention of rules by members of parliament, taking into consideration all the privileges that they enjoy uh, in relation to the rules, but also to the constitution and the powers and privileges act. And there is this consistent tendency to deal with them as the collective. As you would have seen here, uh, there's no, uh, you know, uh, any, any even effort to try and convince us, for an example, in what way did member Sonti contravene the rules in relation to the charges that have been brought against her? Even during evidence, uh, there were admissions by both presiding officers uh, as well as some of the parliamentary staff like the sergeant at arms uh, that uh, there was no best application of rules. Uh, there was no consistency in the application of those rules uh, that actually no member, uh, some of the members that had been chucked out were not removed according to the rules. This report makes uh, no reference to those instances. It is not speaking to those important aspects of Jefferson. the application of the rules in relation to the but charges that have been brought against members. Just the point of order, Jefferson. Is Honorable, okay. Mlosi, is Honorable Mlosi dealing with the report of the the, the, that is before us or the report that we previously adopted on the 11th of December. I'm a bit okay. confused about the order of his arguments. I'm just trying to follow what, what argument is, is, is actually advancing. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay, it looks like it's not a point of order as such but uh, it's just uh, to request for clarification, whether Honorable Josie is dealing with this one or the previous one. You can clarify that one, Honorable Josie. The person, we are discussing the closing arguments in relation to the events of the 11th of July, 2019. That's what's on the table. We've been asked uh, by yourself uh, to deliberate on it, and then you are going Thank to you. be able. No, continue. Uh, continue on our own doors. Oh, okay. So that's what's on the table. That's what I'm dealing with. Um, the event I, is on the 7th of July 2019. It's not December. 11th of July, Chairperson, uh, 2019. The events of the 11th of July. So there is a document sent to us which advocate my OCD deliberated on in December. It was tabled. And then yes. now it's even. Okay, Honorable Peters, let me just uh, 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 
run the proceedings. Uh, if you want to come back, you can just raise your hand. I'll recognize you. Uh, so that we, we avoid the dialogue. Okay, Honorable Nkosi, proceed. Thanks, Chairperson. Um, yes, in, I, I, since uh, seeing that that is clear, uh, I'm saying that the report is a serious mockery of, of best legal practice. There's a there's very weak interrogation of evidence that was presented to all of us. There's very uh, inconsistent um, uh, dealing with uh, some of the witnesses and what they said and what evidence they led. And I'm making an example here about um, the inability, for an example, in the question of the removal of members. Both the sergeant at arms and the presiding officer admitted to have not uh, been told on the part of the sergeant at arms, he didn't know who he was going to remove. Went in and removed people in red overalls. He was asked, who told you to remove those people? Who said they're the ones that must be removed since everybody was at the center? Chairperson. The presiding officer. Chairperson. Okay, is that a point of order? Yes, Chairperson. Okay, let's mm. listen to okay. Thank you very much, Chairperson. My point of order, Chair, is that uh, Honorable Ndlozi, I think the way he's presenting himself now, it seems as if he's not actually talking to the report it itself. It seems as if he's the legal representative of those people who are charged. So I just want to remind Comrade uh, Honorable Ndlozi that he is part of the committee members. So when he talks to the report, he must not talk as if he's a legal representative. He must just tell us that- That, that, that is one, absolute nonsense. That is absolute nonsense. I don't think That's you are nonsense. saying that to me, Honorable- No, that is absolute, I am. No, that is, no. Uh, Can you stop no. interrupting me? No. Can you stop interrupting me? Uh, you are all disrespecting me now. Honorable Chairperson, on a point of order, mm -hmm. I think uh, now the meeting is degenerating now. Yeah, point of order. Honorable no, but Chairperson, you, are, you, you, Honorable, must, Honorable you must protect Chairperson. me. You must protect Honorable me. Must I'm being be, abused here. Because I'm capable of protecting you and I will protect you. Please, don't come in. Don't issue the insult. You know what you said is unparliamentary. There was no need for you to say that. I'm chairing the meeting. There is a point of order. The point of order will be presented and I will rule out that point of order. That's how it is done. Don't be, don't be, um, you are now angry, you are responding immediately and the meeting has been presided over by the chairperson. And now you want everything else to degenerate. I'm going to rule on that point of order. Okay. So let me rule since, uh, uh, Honorable Maluleka has uh, looked like he has, complete, has concluded his point of order. Uh, Honorable Maluleka, I, I'm afraid I don't think it's a point of order. Uh, <clears throat> we can't prescribe to the members on how they should argue their points. Uh, we must allow that every member here of this committee has got the right to make his own or her own submission, uh, being a member of the committee. We can't prescribe that uh, you must not talk like this, you must talk like that, because uh, uh, members have got the right to raise whatever issues that they want to raise for as long as it is relevant to the subject that we are dealing with. So let's just be patient and allow all members to argue. Even, even if they, they, they differ with us, let's just be patient or they present arguments that uh, may not be agreeable to what we will be presenting. It is the nature of this institution, it's democratic. There must be free expression of views 
in the committee as well as in the in the house so let's allow members to argue if they have got different views let's allow them to express those views honorable members honorable Ngozi, what you said you know it's unparliamentary and i'm going to ask you to withdraw it no that's fine chairperson uh, I, I i withdraw the fact that the honorable member was speaking nonsense okay. i withdraw continue thanks indeed uh, and I, I i i i for the sake of a uh, progress and smooth uh, proceedings i would really request that we become patient with each other we through you chairperson obviously i'm making my deliberations honorable members are free to disagree i'm saying that this closing argument is a serious mockery of justice it, it has a weak um, interrogation of evidence it has ignored a lot of evidence that we that was presented in the proceedings and i'm making examples to the effect that for uh, the presiding officer as well as the surgeon at arms both admitted that there was no application of rules on the part of the presiding officer in the way the members were removed i'll give you a small example you know people make uh, there, there, there seems to be some uh, uh, panic about the fact that Honorable Fonyan said, I quote, this man is not going to speak here. And this here is read as a deliberate contravention of the rules and uh, causing disruption and not uh, uh, complying with the rules. And there's, there's no recourse, at, there's no reference at all to the fact that a mere speech of a member of parliament who's got all the rights to free speech doesn't matter what they say they've got the rights to free speech the mere speaking is not itself um, a, a deliberate contravention of the rules particularly if they are called to order and then they sit down or whatever the case might be but all types of evidence was presented which is missing in this document which is missing even the questions that we were raising that exposed the the inconsistencies, including uh, of, 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 of table staff in their observations, all that evidence is not here. So I find it difficult to identify with this report, with this closing argument, and, and I find it difficult to accept its conclusions or its recommendations. And then the final point relates to the question which is dealt with right in the beginning about just the, the committee not being able in the way that it's constituted to can conduct free and fair proceedings because it is constituted in terms of majority rule. That argument has not been dealt with at all. So there's no substance that she, in, in, in a way, uh, the report does not help us. Does not help us to deal with what with, with what was presented as evidence, which was what what was presented as arguments in front of the committee. It is very quick. It's in a rush to find members of parliament guilty. Um, and then finally, Chairperson, having said that, um, the, the 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 idea of members of parliament coming into the floor, all members of parliament or members of parliament from different political parties. That was also a very weak dealing of that argument. I know evidence was met, but we poked questions to reveal some of the things. And you can't satisfy yourself with the fact that securities came into parliament, selected people in overalls because only those, be majority of which those people said nothing during the proceedings. They are the same as Mazzoni, they are the same as other members of parliament who just moved into the floor. You're not dealing with the fact that there was, even at that instance, a clear targeting of the EFF as a political party, which is inconsistent with the rules, which is inconsistent with the constitution. So in my view, I would, I would ask us to reject this closing argument uh, because it has not dealt thoroughly with the evidence that was presented. 47 pages of all those members, 
of all that record, of all the evidence that was put there, 47 pages of the rush to just find members guilty. It's a mockery of justice, in my view, and it must be rejected. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Honorable Blos. Maybe just for, for my own clarity, the 47 page you are referring to, which pages, which submission? So the closing Honorable. argument, Honorable Chairperson. Sorry, oh, can I you, proceed? Oh, you are referring to the closing argument. Yes, the, the closing argument is the document tabled to us, Chairperson, for which you asked us to deliberate on. I've not spoken about anything else. That's what I'm talking about. In my yeah. record here, yeah, it is 47 pages, 130 points. Okay, no, no, it's fine. I thought I thought you were, you were referring to some submission that was done uh, during the no, hearing. No, 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 okay. no. Okay. I'm speaking yeah. to this document. The closing argument, which is making recommendations of finding okay. all members of parliament guilty that were charged. Okay. That's no, what we're debating yesterday. Okay, I'm clarified. Uh, I see Thanks. hands. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Honorable and Close. I see hands uh, from uh, Honorable Christian. Uh, you will pardon me, I don't see the same name. Uh, and then uh, followed by Honorable Zayke and Honorable Hussein. <clears throat> I think let's open it for, for deliberation. I. I did ask that uh, let's deliberate, uh, and there was no submission. Uh, and now, Nclosi, Honorable Nclosi, uh came back and uh, is deliberating. So I guess probably let's do that deliberation, and then we'll go. <clears throat> we will go uh, member by member who has been charged and look at uh, the charges. Uh, but I think what Honorable Ngozi did took a global view of uh, the issue. Uh, he didn't necessarily went into member by member because we had started with Honorable Matthias, but it's fine. I think let's do that. Uh, and then we'll come back and do member by member. Honorable Christian. <clears throat> Thank you, Honorable Chair. And the same name is Msimang. Oh, Msimang, okay. Msimang, yes. Uh, I'm glad and I'm grateful that you're opening the floor for deliberations. Uh, I just would like to have clarity on the points on which the affected members uh, objected to the composition of the committee. I see that they took this matter to court in a case against the speaker, but I don't see any finding by the court as to whether the composition is constitutional or unconstitutional. I would have, I would ask for clarity there. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I guess the, clarif the clarity uh, you are seeking from the chair, Honorable Musimang. Yes. Just, uh, uh, okay. All right. Now I will clarify that part. Uh, I don't know whether to do it now or as wait for a member. Maybe let me just do that now. <clears throat> Um, uh, Honorable Msimango, you'll recall that, oh, by the way, you, uh, you were not a uh, part of the hearing uh, when we were conducting the hearing in Cape Town. Unfortunately. Oh, unfortunately, yes, yeah, so, okay. So we received the uh, correspondences from um, the legal representatives of uh, the church members, um, several correspondents. And uh, the correspondents basically was requesting that we must postpone um, the hearing 
<clears throat> not proceed with the hearing until certain matters are clarified, um, particularly the issue of the composition. So the lawyers of the church members, so let me say the lawyers of the EFF, were arguing that uh, the manner in which this committee is composed, is constituted, uh, is not uh, objective. Uh, in a sense that uh, it is dominated by the ANC and that domination by the ANC of this committee. Uh, I'm just paraphrasing the argument. I'm not just, uh, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm paraphrasing them. They are saying that uh, it would not be a fair process uh, because uh, it is composed in line with how the National Assembly is uh, constituted. Uh, which has got an ANC majority, and therefore the ANC as a ruling party will utilize its majority to discipline the other opposition parties, in this case, the EFF. So they're asking that there must be an independent chairperson and an independent panel to look into this matter. So they raise other arguments in their correspondence or other issues. So we considered this in our meeting in Cape Town, and we decided that uh, we are going to proceed as a, as a committee uh, because we are constituted in line with the Powers and Privileges Act and in line with the rules of the National Assembly. So it is not up to us to now change the rules or change the act uh, we are proceeding until such time that whoever wants to contest uh, the provisions of the act or the rules has got a right to go to court. If the court determines otherwise, I think it will be binding on parliament. And so that's how we proceeded. We are aware that there is a court challenge, but the court has not ruled as yet. So there's nothing that is binding on us. So the, what we have, is the Powers and Privileges Act and the rules of the National Assembly. So that's what we are implementing and we're following. I hope I was uh, of uh, assistance, Honorable Sima. Can we move to uh, Honorable Hussein? Yeah, uh, Chairperson, I wish to just make the following comments, please. And I, notwithstanding the my earlier comments and my my thoughts on, on the report. I listened carefully to uh, Honorable Ngozi and I, I agree with your ruling to grant him the opportunity to, to express his view. I was hopeful that perhaps in his submission that I, were, I would have been able to change my mind and consider what he was saying. So that's why I listened to it carefully. Um, and having listened to what he had said, Chair, um, I recognize that we have to make a decision on the balance of probabilities. And the submission that Honorable Ngozi has just made um, raises uh, some, I won't call it procedural matters, but from what I understand, in his view, there were some omissions in the report that we're dealing with at the moment. So in my view, having considered what he had said and having read the report, on the balance of probabilities, I do not think that that changes the position uh, of, of the recommendation and the guilt on the part of the members. There is more than enough evidence in the report uh, to suggest that those members who were charged uh, are guilty of those offenses. So I wanted to just put that on the table uh, for the record to say that, that from, from my side, I've listened carefully to what he had said and wondered whether or not we could come out with a different position. But I'm not convinced uh, after he has made that argument that the report should be changed in any way whatsoever. There is a further difficulty that I have with that submission, Chairperson. And, it, and, and I refer you then to, uh, I think it's clause 21 on the report itself, uh, where the legal representatives of, of the uh, charge members uh, indicate that they are withdrawing from the proceedings because of they, they believe that the, 
the, the, the substantive unfairness in the entire process. Now, the difficulty that I have is that there was an opportunity granted to the members to defend themselves uh, before the committee and could have very well through the proceedings raised some of those arguments that Honorable and Rosi is now raising, but they chose not to exercise that opportunity. And perhaps I think that I would have been more convinced and other members of the committee would have been more convinced if they had taken up that opportunity rather than having to challenge the procedural matter. So I don't think that they, that, that, uh, that they could not have made those arguments as well as challenging uh, the constitutionality of the process. Nothing stops them from doing both. Uh, it does not mean that, that you can't or you should not proceed uh, or participate in the proceedings um, and still you, you still have the opportunity to be able to challenge the constitutionality of it later on. So the bottom line uh, and the point that I want to make, Chairperson, is I do not think that the, that the arguments that Honorable and Lozi had raised, in my view, as a member of the committee, changes my, my position. And I, I wonder, I think that that would probably be the same for other members, but I don't speak on their behalf. I'm just making my submission from my side. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Hussein. Uh, Honorable Lodrich. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I can unfortunately, unfortunately not activate my video. I have a very poor connection. Um, okay. But Chair, I want to fully concur with what Honorable Hussein has said. And I have also sat Satisfied myself in terms of the legal procedure following rule and powers and privileges act, and I have satisfied myself that the processes followed are uh, procedural, and I am in favour and I support the recommendations as contained. Okay, thank you, thank you, Honourable uh, Lodrick. Indeed, you are connected connection is uh, it's a bit unstable. Uh, you kept on breaking, but uh, we did hear what you what you said. Uh, I saw Honorable Tsaike, if you, as, have you withdrawn your request to participate? Yes, thanks, uh, Grace Tsaike. I want to switch on my video also uh, because of network instability. Hey, Chair, um, initially I raised my hand because I wanted to uh, clarify the matter in terms of the process that was outlined both by your good self, uh, Advocate Mayusi, and uh, our legal team, Chair, uh, because I can see that we are all over. We are not focused, Chair, because uh, Advocate Mayusi gave us an opportunity to interact with him with regard to head losing remarks. But members did not raise, there was no member who raised his or her hand. Therefore, the legal team has made it clear to say, let's deal case by case, member by member. And we're therefore in, the, in Honorable Matthias's case, of which I am, and there was a proposal of supporting all the seven case charges that were forwarded to um, uh, Matthias. I'll also second chair. Um, all the recommendations made to Honorable Matthias, Chair, and, and I also um, uh, propose that we move, Chair, because there were segments um, to the, those charges of the Honorable Member Matthias. We move to the second um, member, Chair, who is Ms. Shonyan. Thanks, Chairperson. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Tseke. Uh, I saw the hand of the deputy chief whip, uh, but the land has been lowered. Any other take up? Uh, Honorable Chair. Okay, Honorable uh, Takude. Thank you very much. Uh, my apologies. I lowered the hand because I thought uh, that I have been noted. noted. Uh, Honorable Chair, I want to support the inputs made by the honor by the previous speakers, the honorable members, that uh, 
we support the recommendations. So this issue of challenging the process and all the, and the constitutionality of this uh, committee is neither here nor there. So it's within their rights to take this matter to court. So as parliament, we, we, we cannot be stopped from doing what is expected of us. I therefore second Honorable Tseke that we proceed to the next uh, member charged so that we may proceed with uh, the work of this committee. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Deputy Chief Whip. Uh, Honorable Msimang, you want to come back? You will be the last speaker on this point. Uh, or is an old hand, Honorable Msimang? Okay, so let's uh, then summarize. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, I've had members, uh, submissions of all the members, all these new hands. Honorable Peters. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I do support the input by Honorable Tseke with regard to Honorable uh, Matthias with the seven charges that were put to, to him. And uh, probably Chairperson for, for the record, the chair could just mention that he was found guilty on this charge and this charge and this charge and this charge and this, so that we have it on record. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, Honorable Msimang, can you lower your hand? Or, or I'm not the host, so I can't do it. Uh, okay, uh, Namka, please lower Honorable Msimang's hand. Okay, members, I have listened to the submission by all the members. Um, and uh, the, <clears throat> the majority view of the members is that we must proceed uh, with the, uh, the charges, uh, list charge by charge or member by member. And the uh, honorable Ndlozi submissions uh, Unfortunately, members are not convinced by uh, the submission that has been made by Honorable Ndrozi. Uh, members are still of the view that uh, the process and the procedure that was followed is correct. And the substance in the allegations that have been taken through. Uh, and, uh, and so we must proceed to listen to consider member by member. Now, uh, Honorable Matthias was charged with uh, seven charges. I thought that uh, we were all familiar with the charges, but there is a request that I must, I must read all the charges so that uh, we understand what Honorable Matthias is found guilty of. Uh, because that is the that is the view of the committee that Honorable Matthias is guilty as charge. There are seven charges against Honorable Matthias. The first one, charge one, it is alleged that Honorable Matthias is guilty of uh, conduct constituting contempt of parliament in terms of section 13C of the powers Privileges and Immunities of Parliament and Provincial Legislatures Act of 2004, in that as a member of parliament and during a mini plenary session of the National Assembly convened in committee room E249 on 11 of July 2019 for the purposes of holding a debate on budget vote nine, public enterprises, Honorable Matthias contravenes Section 7A of the Act 
when he willfully refused and or failed to obey rule 92.8, rule 92.9, and rule 92.11 of the rules of the National Assembly, <clears throat> read together by persisting with a point of order after the presiding officer, whose ruling was final and binding, had ruled that the matter raised was not a point of order. This conduct improperly interfered with or impeded the ability of the House to exercise its authority or functions, continue with the business of the day and was disruptive of the proceedings of the House. The second charge on which Honorable Matthias is, is charged, it says that it is alleged that Honorable Matthias is guilty of conduct constituting contempt of parliament in terms of section 13C of the powers and privilege, powers, privileges and immunities of parliament and provincial legislatures act of 2004. I will refer to this as the act and not read it in full in the next charges. In that as a member of parliament and during a mini plenary session of the National Assembly convened in the committee room E249 on the 11th of July, 2019, for the purposes of holding a debate on budget vote nine, public enterprises, he contravened section 7B of the act when he willfully refused and or failed to obey rule 92.8, 92.9, of the rules of the National Assembly read together by persisting with a point of order after the presiding officer, whose ruling was final and binding had ruled that the matter raised was not a point of order. This conduct co improperly interfered with the performance of the Minister of Public Enterprises of his functions as a member of parliament. Charge three, it is alleged that Honorable Matthias is guilty of uh, conduct constituting contempt of parliament in terms of section 13C of the powers of the act in that as a member of parliament and during a mini plenary session of the National Assembly convened on 11 of July, 2019, in committee room E249 for the purposes of holding a debate on vote nine, public enterprises, he contravened section 7A of the act when during the proceedings, he willfully failed and or refused to obey rule 6D of the rules of the National Assembly by crossing the floor of the house in front of the benches during the proceedings. Such conduct improperly interfered with or impeded the exercise performance by the house of its authority and functions. Charge four, it is alleged that Honorable Matthias is guilty of conduct constituting contempt of parliament in terms of section 13C of the act in that as a member of parliament and during a mini plenary session of the National Assembly convened on 11 July 2019 in committee room E249 for the purposes of holding a debate on vote nine public enterprises. He contravened section 7B of the act when during the proceedings he willfully failed and or refused to obey rule 64D of the rules of the National Assembly by crossing the floor of the house in front of the benches during the proceedings. Such conduct improperly interfered with the performance by the Minister of Public Enterprises of his function as a member of parliament. Charge five, it is alleged that he is guilty of conduct constituting contempt of parliament in terms of section 13C of the act in that as a member of parliament and during a mini plenary session of the National Assembly convened on 11 July, 2019, in committee room E249, uh, for the purposes of holding a debate on vote nine public enterprises, he contravened section 7E of the act when during the proceedings he willfully fail and or refuse to obey rule 69A of the rules. 69A, rule 69C, and rule 69D of the rules of the National Assembly by A, 
deliberately engaging in conduct that created serious disorder or disruption in the house, B, repeatedly undermining the authority of the presiding officer, repeatedly refusing to obey rulings of the presiding officer and repeatedly disrespecting and interrupting the presiding officer while she was addressing the house, and C, persisting in making serious allegations against the Minister of Public Enterprises without adequate substantiation and following the correct procedure. By engaging in such conduct, which was grossly disorderly, Honorable Matthias created and took part in a disturbance during a meeting of the House within the parliamentary precinct. Charge six, it is alleged that uh, Honorable Matthias is guilty of conduct constituting contempt of parliament in terms of section 13A of the powers, privileges, and immunities of, power, of parliament and provincial legislature act. In that as a member of parliament and during a mini plenary session of the National Assembly convened on 11 July 2019 in committee room E249, for the purposes of holding a debate on budget vote, on vote nine public enterprises. He contravened section 7A of the act when during the proceedings, he willfully failed and or refused to obey rule 69, rule 69A, rule 69C and rule 69D of the rules of the National Assembly by a, deliberately engaging in conduct that created serious disorder and disruption in the house. B, repeatedly undermining the authority of the presiding officer, repeatedly refusing to obey rulings of the presiding officer and repeatedly disrespecting and interrupting the presiding officer while she was addressing the house. C, persisting in making serious allegations against the Minister of Public Enterprises without adequate substantiation and following the correct procedure. By engaging in such conduct, he improperly interfered with the exercise of or the performance of the house of its authority and function. Charge seven, it is alleged that Honorable Matthias is guilty of conduct constituting contempt of parliament in terms of section 13A of the act in that as a member of parliament and during a plenary session of the National Assembly convened on 11 July in committee room E249 for the purposes of holding a debate on vote nine public enterprises, he contravened section 7B of the act when during the proceedings he willfully failed and or refused to obey rule 69A's rule 69C and rule 69D of the rules of the National Assembly by a, deliberately engaging in conduct that created serious disorder or disruption in the house, repeatedly undermining the authority of the presiding officer, repeatedly refusing to obey rulings of the presiding officer and repeatedly disrespecting and interrupting the presiding officer while she was addressing the house. C, persisting in making serious allegation allegations against the Minister of Public Enterprises without adequate substantiation or following the correct procedure. By engaging in such conduct, he improperly interfered with the performance by the Minister of Public Enterprises of his functions as a member. So those are the seven charges on which Honorable Matthias has been found guilty of. <clears throat> Uh, can we move to the next member, who's Honorable uh, Kloyana, Kloyana, sorry, my apologies, Honorable Kloyana, and get Honorable Kloyana and Honorable Komani are charged with the same charges. <coughs> uh, they are there are five charges, six, seven. Uh, what do you say to, on this uh, charges, honorable members? 
Can I get hands? We have moved from Honorable uh, Honorable Matthias. We are going to do them. We are going to consider them one by one, members. I just need an indication from members, Honorable uh, Hussein and Honorable Msimang and Honorable Suel. Chair, I'm just raising a point of clarity. Uh, I'm satisfied with Andre, uh, Honorable Matias and the charges for which I, I, I did mention that I believe that he is guilty of. So I'm just trying to find out from you now which member and charges are we dealing with next so that I can give you my response. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there are 13 members. Um, Honorable Matias was facing six, seven charges, as I've read them. And the uh, Honorable Tronyana and Honorable Koma, Komani are facing seven charges. Uh, and then it does look like we'll get to the rest of the members, but the rest of the members looks like they are facing five charges each. Uh, <clears throat> Do I have to to read through the charges because they are these charges have been read out. Uh, so shouldn't we say that uh, if we agree with the, the recommendation on the subsequent, we should just say as charged. If we don't agree, we say no, we don't find them guilty as charged. Instead of me reading through all of them like this. But you can still consider member by member because we don't have to do all of them. So we are now on Tronyana, Tronyana, uh, or Tronyana, sorry. And Tronyana. Eh? I'm bad. <laughs> I know I'm very yeah. bad. Yeah. I, uh, nobody's taking offense because I struggle. Uh, Maybe I, I, I like to be a perfectionist, so I like to be very perfect. And in the process, I make uh, mistakes of mispronouncing uh, people's names. So what do we say, members? Chairperson. We're now comparing the two of them, Honorable uh, Hussein. Yes, uh, I'm clear now what you're asking from us. and. Um... I'm in agreement to the recommendation that both members be found guilty of the charges that they are facing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Both members are facing seven charges as read out during the hearing, which are appearing on uh, number 27 of the closing arguments of uh, Honorable Marius. Pages uh, 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 is there a point of order? Who's speaking? Is there a point of order? Uh, no, Chairperson, it's not a point of order. No, Chairperson. Okay. Uh, no, I wanted to ask that you register my objection. Oh, on the first one. Uh, it, it looks like we are taking the first and the second member register my objection okay. to to the I don't think they are guilty I think they are not guilty okay well let, let's say on Matthias on the second one we are still taking proposal from members as to whether they are guilty or not so we'll register your objection on the guilty finding by the committee on honorable Matthias Honorable Sonyana and Honorable Komani. Uh, Honorable uh, Hussein has already moved, uh, seconded what, that they should be found guilty. Honorable Msimang. Uh, Honorable Msimangu's hand is up. I'm recognizing you, Honorable Msimangu. 
Okay, let's move to Honorable Suel. Uh, th <clears throat> thank you, Chairperson. Um, I'm supporting the recommendation by the initiator uh, for the two honorable members, Honorable Tanyan and Honorable Koman, uh, that um, they be found guilty as recommended by the initiator. Uh, I, I think um, I'm concurring with the, the latter speaker, not Honorable Luz, Honorable Lucien. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Stop. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, I would also like to concur and support the proposal tabled by Honorable Hussein that the two members uh, must be found guilty as it has been recommended in the initiator's report. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, the charges are appearing on page 13 to page 20 of uh, the arguments by the initiator. All these charges have been read to members. We were there, we know of the charges. So um, in the absence of any other hand, I, I think the committee says that the two members must be found guilty as charged on the charges that uh, have been read to them in the past, but on this set of arguments, they are appearing on pages 13 up to page 20. There are seven charges. Uh, Honorable Ndozi, you are you are also saying that you must record your objection if we do find them guilty with the uh, two members. Your objection has been noted. <clears throat> um, Uh, Andile, please uh, assist there. Eh? Chair. Yeah. Uh, I said, what's the question, Chair? <laughs> okay. We we were considering um, Honorable Matthias. Yes. We returned a guilty verdict on him. Yes. And and uh, we then move to Honorable uh, Komani and Honorable Tonyana. The committee returned a guilty finding. Yes. Uh, I wanted to go to the next member. Okay, Chair. Um, you will see so that just, the just other... <clears throat> Because I know the others are, all of them are charged. They, have, they, are, they are facing five yes. charges each. Yes, Chair. Um, okay, Why Chair. If you help me. Okay, yes. before, yes. before you, okay. you should, I want you to uh, take me to the charges, the five charges that they are facing each. All right, all uh, right. But, um, yes. Okay. Uh, I see that uh, the committee has dealt with a finding which is found in paragraph 93 regarding uh, Honorable Matthias. And there's also a finding which is in paragraph 104 uh, regarding um, Mrs. Lonyana, and a finding in paragraph 112 regarding Mrs. Komana. So the committee is done with that. Now, what remains is 13 uh, members, Chair. And you will see that uh, all of them um, have five charges against them. Now, the first charge, uh, is in relation to Section 7A of the Act, uh, read uh, together with the Rule 64D. Now, the second charge is in relation to Section 7B of the Act, read together with the Rule 64D. The third charge is in relation to Section 7E of the Act, read together with the Rule 69A. The fourth charge is in relation to Section 7A of the Act, Read together with the rules 69A, 69C, and 69D. And the last charge is in respect of section 7B of the Act, read with rule 69A. Now, if I may call out the names 
of the members concerned. Um, it's Honorable Teza, Honorable Shabangu, Honorable Langa, Honorable Mazingozi, Honorable Mushala, Honorable Muntwedi, Honorable Musane, Honorable Mtenjane, Honorable Paulson, Honorable Shendeni, Honorable Siwisa, Honorable Sondi, and Honorable Tito. And I think the finding is in paragraph 124. I'm not sure if it's a... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I think, uh, thank you. Um, it's, uh, we move to the rest of the members. Uh, they are 13. Uh, their names are appearing on paragraph number 25 of uh, the closing arguments of uh, the initiator. Uh, they are facing five charges, all of them. Uh, and it's charge number three, charge number four, charge number five, six, and seven. Charge number three, <clears throat> uh, it's a charge that I've already read out that Honorable Matthias was charged on, uh, which has been explained here now. And uh, the charge five, Charge four, as it is appearing on page 16 of the closing arguments. Uh, and it's charge five is appearing on page 18, which I've already read it out. Uh, and then charge six is appearing on page number 19 which I've already read it out. Uh, and charge number seven, uh, which is the last charge that they are charged with, is, is uh, contained on page number 20 of the closing arguments. I've already read out this charge. Uh, let me just read out the names of the members. It's Honorable uh, uh, Za, Honorable Shabangu, Honorable Langa, Honorable Madlingozi, Honorable Mushala, Honorable Muntwedi, <clears throat> Honorable Msani, Honorable Mtenjani, Honorable Paulson, Honorable Shembeni, Honorable Siwisa, Honorable Sonti, and Honorable Tito. Those are all the members who have been charged with five charges that uh, I've already read out, charge three, four, five, six, and seven. What is the attitude of the committee if I can get hands from members? Honorable Hussein, uh, followed by Honorable Lozi, followed by uh, Honorable um, Simanga. Honorable Simanga, I, I, <clears throat> I hope that uh, your connectivity is, is quite good. Uh, I was reading out your name earlier on. Uh, you didn't come on the platform, so I don't know whether your, your connectivity is fine, but let's take the three members now and then we will uh, take names if necessary. Uh, Honorable Hussein. Hey, person, may I just uh, make one comment for the record, please, before I tell you my position on those charges. And my, my difficulty is, is uh, simply this, is that I, I, I really, uh, want us to be absolutely fair to the charge members and uh, make a decision that I think is fair to everybody whilst at the same time upholding the rules of parliament. My difficulty is that none of these members have taken up the opportunity to at least provide their explanation or their side of the story so that I, I would have had at least the, the, the privilege of listening to it 
and perhaps coming to a different conclusion than what's in the document. So I do want to just place on record that I think it's it's very unfortunate that they have not taken up the opportunity to, at least even in writing, put before the committee their version and their side of the story so that I could have at least uh, given some due consideration uh, to the reasons for their conduct on that specific day in uh, E249 during the, that budget vote debate. So in the absence of that information, the only evidence and information that's before us and before myself at the moment is what's in the document in the report before us. And on the basis of that, Chairperson, I can find no other reason uh, but to, to support the recommendation that, that all of those members be found guilty of the charges that have been uh, brought against them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Honorable Lozi. Thank you, Chairperson. Unfortunately, uh, on Hussein, regardless of uh, how much he wants to appear a fair person, he was not part of the trial. Evidence was presented, evidence was poked. The report is not evidence. The report is not evidence. The report is a summary of the proceedings. That, as it says, it's a concluding argument. The concluding argument, it's not evidence itself. So there's there's no I don't even know why people were not part of the of the trial think they can be fair and apply themselves fairly. Having said that, Chairperson, it's me responding through you to what the honorable member has said. I think these members are not guilty based on the evidence that was presented and conversed during the trial. Uh, and then uh, I think the closing argument. Uh, makes a serious, a serious uh, injustice in relation to the consideration of all that evidence. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Honorable Ngozi. Honorable Msima. Um, uh, we are not getting Honorable Msima on the on the platform, he is on the platform, but uh, um, Honorable Msimanga, if you can just unmute your mic, because I can see that uh, you you can hear us. Um, every time I ask for hands, you you do raise your hand, so it means that you can hear what I'm speaking. We'll come back to you. Let's uh, <clears throat> take Honorable Maluleg. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson. I want to support Honorable Hussein to say that we, according to the report that is before us, I agree that we find the members guilty as charged, even though they have deprived themselves a chance that was given to them to come and uh, present to themselves. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Maluleg. And uh, <clears throat> that, uh, I noted your apology, Honorable Maluleg, earlier on. Uh, when you were calling a point of order on Honorable Ndozi. And I think that's a very good thing that you did. And Honorable Peters as well as a uh, as standard uh, apology earlier on. <clears throat> I think it's in a very good spirit of um, uh, allowing each member to express his or her views. And I think it's a good thing that uh, that apology is rendered. And uh, I certainly, as a chair, I'm accepting that apology, both of them. Honorable Msimang, I can see your video is opened. Uh, you can go ahead. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Do you hear me now? Yes, I can hear okay. you now. Yeah, I was supporting the uh, concluding 
uh, arguments of the initiator because he explains the case and he refers to the rules and the sections of the act that have been violated. And therefore I agree with his conclusion that uh, the honorable members are guilty. Thank you very much, uh, honorable Isma. Thank you. Honorable uh, Suela. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Let me join my colleagues by uh, stating that uh, I think the concluding um, remarks in that particular document, which we can call it arguments by the initiator, they are relevant because the initiator has indicated all the, the section and the reasons why she feels they are guilty. So I'm supporting that based on that uh, closing argument, not necessarily on sticking to any political party because they were dealing with honorable members. So I'm supporting the recommendation by the, the initiator, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't see any more hands. <clears throat> I take it that, Honorable Nglose, is this the, the previous hand or is the new hand? Sorry, Chairperson, uh, you have already noted me. I will lower it. All right. Okay, I think uh, <clears throat> um, uh, members have expressed their views and uh, the majority of the members are of the view that uh, we must return a guilty finding on the members who are charged. I am going to read the, one last more for the record and say that uh, this committee finds the following members guilty as charged on the three charges, charge three, charge four, charge five, charge six, and charge number seven that are appearing in the documents. It's Honorable Teza, uh, Honorable Shabangu, Honorable Langa, Honorable Magingozi, Honorable Mutala, Honorable Muntwedi, Honorable Msani, Honorable Mtenjani, Honorable Paulson, Honorable Shembeni, Honorable Siwisa, Honorable Sonti, and Honorable Dito. All of them, the committee finds them guilty as charged. This therefore brings us to the end of uh, the consideration of the closing argument and the deliberation of the committee. Uh, the committee therefore finds uh, the members uh, charged. <clears throat> the members who are charged, uh, the committee finds them guilty. And so in an instance where the committee finds the members guilty, the committee must then allow the members who have been found guilty to make representations before a sanction can be imposed. And so uh, <clears throat> it does look like uh, the work of Honorable my Advocate Mayosi has not come to an end. And so we would allow uh, those members charged, uh, those members found guilty. A communique will be sent to the members and they will be given an opportunity to make representation. As soon as we receive the representation within the stipulated time frames, we will then convene a meeting of this committee uh, to consider the representation and to finalize on the sanction uh, that this committee must impose because in terms of the rules, once we find members guilty, we must decide on the sanction. The sanctions are there, there are various sanctions have been uh, <clears throat> prescribed uh, in the act. 
and so we'll have to follow what has been prescribed. Uh, this therefore brings us to the end of this meeting. I would like to thank the members. I also want to, to say that uh, uh, I think uh, probably the emotions might have gone up. Where we, my apologies, <clears throat> where uh, there was a bit of an exchange, but I, as I was reading on the on the platform, the messages that have been uh, posted there, Honorable uh, Maloleka has apologized, uh, Honorable um, Peters has also apologized for calling an order, uh, which was a, a question of clarity, so to speak, but uh, she was more, uh, she was uh, even willing to apologize, even if uh, it might not have needed an apology. So I think the spirit, that spirit must prevail, honorable members, until we finish, because we started very well, we've been doing fine. And so I hope that honorable Ndlozi also does accept the apology. And that's how, despite the fact that we disagree, but uh, that decorum has to be there. We must demonstrate the highest level of, uh, <clears throat> of restraint. We must demonstrate that uh, we are capable of engaging in the battle of ideas without necessarily uh, the debate degenerating at any point. And so I'm expecting that even in the next meeting, as we consider the representation, that spirit must prevail like that. So thank you very much, honorable members. Uh, Andile, is there anything that we are missing? We're fine. No, 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 Chair. I think you've, uh, you, you, you've covered everything, Chair. And I think, and I, and I think I'm satisfied with what you have covered, but I think, Perhaps as, 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 as a parting shot, maybe we need to make the point that uh, this committee does not perform a judicial or an, an, or an adjudicative thing. Uh, its function is merely to inquire into this oh. matter. Uh -uh. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Honorable Ndlozi. Oh, you don't trust me, Baba. I can. Uh, sorry, please stay on a point of order. Okay, it's fine. Uh, <clears throat> I guess uh, probably uh, uh, Andy Leo was uh, wanted to, uh, to 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 talk to the chairperson on something, uh, but we'll we we'll take it offline, Andy Leo, that issue. So otherwise, thank okay, you very. Honorable members, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you.